our Earth was born of fire. Two billion years, volcanoes spewed forth the magma which the waking Earth would use to build itself into being. Volcanoes also vented the gases which would form the Earth's atmosphere and the oceans where life itself was born. Then in the last seconds of geologic time, a life form emerged that would seek to understand creation itself. Today, more than 400 active volcanoes shape life on the Pacific Rim. Geologists call it the Ring of Fire. From Navidad in Chile, the volcanoes of the Andes. To the ancient ash-covered empires of Mesoamerica. Past San Francisco on the San Andreas Fault. Mount St. Helens and the Cascades of America's Northwest. To the great volcanic island arcs of the Aleutians, Siberia, and Japan. With sacred Mount Fuji and explosive Mount Sakurajima. To Indonesia, home of Krakatoa. Bromo and Gunung Agung. Here, where half a billion people dwell, is a window on the awesome geological forces that shape our planet. At the very center of the Ring of Fire, on the island of Hawaii, exists a lake of molten lava. In this fiery lake can be seen a likeness of the Earth's crust and the geologic forces that shape it. The Earth's thin crust is formed of great tectonic plates which are in constant motion, spreading, colliding, grinding past one another and plunging back into the molten interior. Around the ring of fire, collisions of the Earth's tectonic plates produce earthquakes and the most violent natural phenomenon on Earth.
This is Navidad volcano in southern Chile, which burst from the earth on Christmas Day 1988 and grew to a height of 1,000 feet in a month. Few people died in this sparsely populated region. Yet, the immense geological forces on the Ring of Fire can just as easily strike at the heart of civilization. Seven thousand miles north on the Ring of Fire, two tectonic plates meet at a great fault called the San Andreas, which lies like a time bomb beneath the city of San Francisco. In 1906, a massive earthquake destroyed this city, and in the years that followed, San Francisco waited as the stresses again built up along the fault. Until one October day in 1989, the third game of the World Series was about to begin between the two Bay Area teams, the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's. The earthquake lasted less than 15 seconds, but 62 people were dead and nearly 4,000 injured. 42 died in the collapse of the Nimitz Freeway. More than 20,000 homes and buildings were damaged or destroyed during the quake. Yet it struck with 1 30th of the energy of the great quake of 1906. Engineers learned a great deal from what structures survived the quake and what failed. A 50-foot section of the Bay Bridge collapsed, where the forces generated by the earthquake sheared the bolts on one side of the span. The bridge was repaired and reopened in a month. Built on landfill, dwellings in the marina district broke apart. The unstable ground beneath them actually magnifying the effects of the quake. Buildings engineered to withstand the greatest earthquakes stood strong. 
and so did the people. So everybody helped each other. It was like one big family out there. It knocked us down, but it sure didn't knock us out. There were disasters everywhere. Everyone lives under some kind of threat, you know. If it's not an earthquake, it's a tornado, a hurricane, flood, you name it. It's a beautiful city, regardless. No, I love it here. I'm never going to leave. Ten days after this quake, we went back to baseball. Now that's, that's the spirit of San Francisco. Though the flags flew at half-mast, the fans reunited at Candlestick Park to resume a World Series. And a game turned into a celebration of renewal. Six hundred miles north of San Francisco is the site of the greatest volcanic eruption in modern American history, Mount St. Helens. Near where he stood that Sunday morning in 1980, photographer Gary Rosenquist recalls the moment. At dawn, I noticed through some trees steam at the very top of the mountain. I got my camera and I just started taking pictures and the whole side of the mountain was sliding away. I was so excited at that time, I couldn't concentrate. It's just, it was just amazing. I'd never seen anything like that before. Hundred and forty square miles of woodland were devastated in the eruption. Fifty-seven people and millions of animals were killed. Today, a ghostly forest still floats on the surface of Spirit Lake. Across the landscape of fallen timber, life is reappearing at a rate that has astonished biologists. Deep within the crater, a lava dome, formed in St. Helens' volcanic throat, has risen over a thousand feet. The mountain is rebuilding itself. With his fellow geologists from the Cascades Volcano Observatory, Dr. Norman Banks is credited with saving thousands of lives. Our monitoring data convinced the governor, who was also a scientist, that an eruption possibly of significant magnitude was developing. Since the explosive eruptions of 1980, we have had to work very close to the center of activity, that is the dome itself, to detect the changes that allow us to forecast the next eruption. You can't predict future eruptions of a volcano until you know its character. Some of the instrumentation we use can be as simple as our own senses, but really to provide data that's quantifiable, we have to resort to high-tech equipment such as seismometers, deformation equipment, and gas analysis. What we're after here is to obtain the ability to save thousands of lives repeatedly around the Ring of Fire. Several weeks after the team left the mountain, the lava dome exploded without warning. Volcanologists foresee even greater eruptions in the future. 
For the forces which created and destroyed Mount St. Helens continue, powerful beyond our imaginings. Deep within the earth, above a core of iron and nickel, is a mantle of lighter elements heated by natural radioactivity. Over millions of years, the mantle behaves like a heated fluid. The thin plates of the Earth's crust float like huge rafts adrift on the fluid mantle. The heavier plates of the spreading seafloor sink beneath the continental plates, creating earthquakes around the Pacific Rim. The sinking plates release super hot fluids which melt the mantle above them. The lighter magma rises, forming complex volcanic conduits and immense magma chambers on its way to eruption. Repeated eruptions, this tectonic process has formed the volcanoes of the Ring of Fire. Mount Tsukurajima is one of hundreds of volcanoes which make up the island arc of Japan. Fire drummers of Mount Sakurajima enact the fury of the volcano. Jima explodes in scores of ash eruptions which blanket the island and the port city of Kagoshima. evacuation drill commemorates the terrible eruption of Sakurajima volcano in 1914. The islanders live in harmony with an active volcano which affects nearly every aspect of their lives. Across the bay in the city of Kagoshima, even the shopping malls have been designed with domed skylights to keep out the regular storms of ash. Life goes on for a people living in the shadow of destruction. Kagoshima survives in part because of the vigilance of the scientists who live and work at the center of the bay, on the very flank of the volcano.
Here, every fluctuation of the volcano is carefully monitored by a team of volcanologists headed by Dr. Kosuki Kamo. Vigilance is a way of life in a country with more than 50 active volcanoes and more than 10,000 earthquakes every year. In the great Tokyo earthquake of 1923, more than 140,000 people perished, mostly from the fires started by the quake. Today, the people of Tokyo are part of a national earthquake preparedness program designed to save thousands of lives. Buildings are structurally engineered to survive the tremendous forces generated by earthquakes. No people on Earth are as prepared for natural disaster as the Japanese. Humans are not the only primates adapted to life on the ring of fire. Heat from volcanic sources warms the hot springs of Nagano, allowing the Japanese snow monkey to survive as the world's most northerly species of monkey. Beipu, people have also learned to live with volcanic powers, harnessing their geothermal energy for health and relaxation. The therapeutic hot springs of Kirishima and the lava sand baths of Beipu have become popular health spas, a respite from the relentless pace of modern life, which in Japan is always just a step away. thousand miles southwest where the ring of fire crosses the equator Buddhas keep watch over the volcanoes of Indonesia at the temple of Borobudur writer anthropologist Lawrence Blair has lived in Indonesia for many years studying the ancient bond between its volcanoes and its people the temple of Borobudur it was built in this highly unstable valley to commemorate the achievement, not of architectural engineering, but of serene harmony in the human heart. For 10 centuries, it has survived earthquakes and eruption, which have long since eclipsed the enlightened empire which built it. For Indonesia, is the most fertile and eruptive nation on the planet. Perhaps the long memory of a shifting, unstable Earth has taught the Indonesians to rely less on the physical world than on the unseen forces behind it.
Deep within the crater of the notorious volcano of Kawaijin, there are those who seek their living directly from the cauldrons of hell. For here is a rare surface source of pure sulfur, to be mined by hand and borne on their backs for 15 miles down the volcano's slopes. Within their lungs, the poisonous fumes turn into sulfuric acid, condemning them to a life of less than 30 years. Still, they accept Kawaijen's terms, grateful for the volcano's gift, confident of their destiny beyond this world of shadows. On the Indonesian island of Bali towers the sacred volcano of Gunung Agung, the navel of the universe. Worshippers still climb the flanks of the sacred mountain, where in 1963, thousands died in an eruption of superheated ash flows. High on the slopes of the sleeping volcano, at the surviving mother temple of all Bali, the Kechak dance unfolds. A ring of fire pulsates as a single organism that is soon divided by strife. Two god kings emerge, leaders of the warring opposites. The king of the monkey people and the king of the demons. Battles violently divide, then reunite the community, restoring its balance, just as the holy mountain above regularly destroys and renews. The rich, fertile land, which is the wealth of Indonesia, is a gift of the volcanoes. A deep and ancient understanding of the connection between life and death gives Indonesians an easy intimacy with both the creative and the destructive powers of the earth, and with their own mortality. In Bali, even the bodies of the dead, together with their finest funeral arts, are returned to fire, to God Shiva's purifying furnace of renewal and rebirth. The fire god, in different forms, is alive atop nearly all of Indonesia's some 140 volcanoes, reflecting an ancient understanding that paradise and catastrophe go hand in hand. creation in all its power, we return to the very center of the ring of fire. The volcanic island of Hawaii has been created in just a few million years. Measured from its base on the Pacific floor, Mauna Loa is the tallest mountain on Earth, and together with its sister volcano, Kilauea, 
it is among the most active. In 1984, Mauna Loa and Kilauea came to life in rare simultaneous eruptions. For 21 days and nights, Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes, danced. Unlike the explosive stratovolcanoes on the Pacific Rim, the more fluid lavas of most Hawaiian volcanoes form fiery lakes and rivers, which flow down the broad slopes of the great Hawaiian shield volcanoes toward the sea. Mauna Loa eruption ended, but Kilauea continued to erupt, and between the volcano and the sea lay the village of Kalapana. Beneath the cooled surface, the lava continued to flow, forming its own underground arteries as it rushed toward the sea. Where the lava flows into the ocean, the island grows. This is the newest land on Earth. In less than a year, life will emerge. In less than a decade, hundreds of species of plants and animals have returned to Mount St. Helens. In less than a century, forests filled with life will once again dominate the land. Creation did not happen just once. Creation continues. It is a beginning without end.
The Earth is alive. We recognize it in the volcanoes of the Ring of Fire. And we bear witness to it in the indomitable spirit of its peoples. <laughs>